Hello, dear motorsportmagazine.com friends and Formula One fans. Practice day here in Monaco. Perhaps the most exciting practice day of the entire Formula One year is behind us, and Charles Leclerc has lived up to his role as favorite. He finished fifth in the first free practice session, but you could already see that he was actually the fastest man on the track. He didn't use the soft tires in the first practice session, whereas the competitors had already put on a bit more of them. In the second free practice, he then put on the soft tires and was able to leave the competitors behind. Yes, he himself complained a little that he couldn't get as much out of the soft tires as he thought. He felt more comfortable on the medium tires. Nevertheless, it was the fastest time, even though he didn't get all the sectors together and even though he got caught up in traffic. According to reports, his fastest lap might have been another two tenths of a second faster without the traffic on his last attempt, so there would even have been something in it. If we look at the long run, Charles Leclerc didn't look good at all, but we don't care about this for two reasons. On the one hand, long runs and Monaco, we don't need to talk about it any further. And on the other hand, he got into a lot of traffic and then he dropped back. Dropped back again and again, that's why his times aren't really representative at all. But how representative are his fast lap times? Charles Leclerc said himself that he perhaps took a little more risk than the one or other of his colleagues. We were at the track today with Christian Danner and were able to observe this live from up close. Charles Leclerc was completely on the limit from the very first lap in the second free practice session. His rear end came around in the swimming pool chicane. That's turn 13 to 16. It looked spectacular what he did there. The Monegasque took a lot more risk than the competitors. At this point, the question is, of course, how much he can improve in qualifying on Saturday when it really matters and how much the rivals can get away with. Teammate Carlos Sainz, by the way, didn't do so well. He was a full 7 tenths of a second behind Leclerc, only 6th position for him in the second free practice session. But he put in the best long run. Yes, you can discuss the long run again now. I'll mention it a few more times in this video, don't worry. But he just doesn't really know why it doesn't work for him on one lap. He then gets into the rhythm on the long run. You hear from Ferrari that it's not to do with the risk that he didn't go at all, but that he just can't really get to grips with the car on one lap. The first runner-up, this may or may not be a big surprise. We already mentioned yesterday that Mercedes were very optimistic going into this weekend, and indeed, Lewis Hamilton was convincing. Best time in the first free practice session. Second place in the second free practice session. Only two tenths of a second behind the best time, and even on soft tires. Yes, he had already put on the softs in the first practice session. Mercedes had expected rain in the second practice session. It was drizzling a bit before the practice session, but it stayed dry in the second free practice. That's why Mercedes and McLaren, for example, have already said, okay, then we'd better try the softs in the first free practice, play it safe, and then they only had one set of soft tires available in the second free practice session. I don't think the difference between used and fresh tires is that big. Sure, the tire has its peak at the beginning, but the other best times were usually not achieved on the first fast lap on the soft tires, but later, when you've got into the groove a bit, because you haven't gone to the limit right from the start, Nevertheless, what we saw from Mercedes, the former series world champion, was a very, very impressive performance. Just two tenths of a second behind, and Lewis Hamilton also spoke of the best Friday of the season. Hardly surprising, things went less smoothly for Russell, his teammate. In the second free practice session, he had strong vibrations on the steering wheel, especially on the brakes. Of course, that doesn't give the driver any confidence in the car. Here in Monaco, of all places, you need an extra dose of confidence. That's why Russell only finished 10th in the second free practice session. In the first free practice, he played the guinea pig, Mercedes has already brought an update here in Monaco that wasn't actually due to arrive until Canada. However, they only have one example of the new front wing with them. It really is a radically different front wing to the one we've been driving so far. In addition, the nose fairing was also modified a little in order to be able to attach the front wing on properly. So that's a major change. It's not yet clear whether the part will be used during the rest of the weekend, and if so, on which car. We'll have to pay close attention on Saturday. I'm looking forward to the first free practice session. Nothing for Russell with it, but quite good. So Mercedes may or may not be the surprise. If you want to make surprises, then I recommend you a print magazine from Motorsport Magazine. You can give it as a gift at a barbecue party. What do you bring along otherwise? Beer, wine. Why not bring a voucher for a year of Motorsport Magazine? Simply go to goodshine.motorsportmagazine.com and give your loved ones something really meaningful for a barbecue party that is more sustainable and won't end up in a hangover the next day. Now we've talked about Ferrari. Now we've talked about Mercedes. We should perhaps also briefly mention Aston Martin at this point. Fernando Alonso, surprisingly strong. We didn't have him on our radar yesterday, but they've already used one more set of softs than their competitors. So Alonso in third place, but still better than expected. But what about Red Bull, if we look over there? 
Over there is the energy station. It's floating here. All the other hospitality set up in the paddock. There's no room for Red Bull for this monstrosity. It's really spectacular again and again every year when you see it like this. So impressive, but the performance on the track was less impressive. Max Verstappen already had a bit of a rant in the first free practice session. He said, yeah, the car is driving on a razor's edge. Things went a little better for him in the second free practice session. He said, the car is bouncing around like a kangaroo. We were able to talk to Dr. Helmut Marco after the practice session. We did the same with him at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix last week, and at Imola he gave me a much less satisfied impression than here. I was a bit surprised by that, and then he explained it to me. The Red Bull Motorsport boss said, here, yes, it wasn't ideal, but we know what went wrong. We were simply far too stiff. We now have to make sure that we set up the car a little softer, make sure that we still maintain the aerodynamic performance to some extent. The stiff car then gave the driver little confidence. That's why Red Bull didn't really dare to push the car to the limit. Dr. Helmut Marco also said, at least in the second free practice session, we were already moving a bit in the right direction. That was completely different in Imola. In other words, we know where we want to go. What's more? Long run. Your favorite topic in this video now. That was very good. It doesn't necessarily have anything to say regarding the race. It doesn't matter how fast you are. But they say at Red Bull, well, you can already see with different fuel loads and engine modes. And engine modes? The engine mode at Red Bull was not yet so aggressive. We also know that from Red Bull on Friday. You then take it a little slower. You can also see it in the data. We can see this better in the graphic overlay. Max Verstappen was significantly slower than the competitors on the straights, especially in the tunnel. That's not because the Honda engine installed in the Red Bull car doesn't have more power. No, they simply haven't given it their all yet. That alone should add another two tenths of a second. And if you then add that in, yeah, then the half a second or a little more than half a second becomes perhaps only two to three tenths, then maybe a bit more risk and so on. And then the Red Bull car could still be something in qualifying, at least for Verstappen. Improvement overnight in the simulator? I have to admit that I have a little less hope on the Red Bull side than I do now in the usual races because what you drive out in the simulator can't necessarily be transferred one-to-one -to, -one to the track here in Monaco. After all, it's all about the driver's confidence in the car. And that confidence is very different in the simulator than on the real track. Qualifying is of course the highlight. Uh, we should perhaps briefly mention McLaren. Uh, they didn't show everything in the second free practice session due to the tire situation. They also used up something in the first free practice session but they looked quite good there, so they are also a force to be reckoned with, even if maybe not quite as strong as in Imola. Qualifying, yes, that's the highlight here in Monaco, and we're a bit worried about that. It was already a topic of discussion among the drivers on Thursday. What happens if someone deliberately tries to prevent times from being improved again? Of course, uh, we all remember uh, a lot of people are already celebrating back there. This is Raskas. There is obviously this famous moment from Michael Schumacher in season 2006. Nico Rosberg once had a moment like that in Mirabeau when he slammed on the brakes and Lewis Hamilton was unable to improve on his time. What do you do in such cases? Perez spun once, unintentionally, but he wasn't on pole anyway. So there's a lot of discussion about this situation back then. But shouldn't Formula One crack down on this? Shouldn't they introduce rules like in other sports where they say, OK, if you cause a yellow phase or a red flag, then at least your best time will be cancelled or something else. Formula One has at least discussed this publicly in the media. Internally with the drivers, within the drivers' union GPDA, it wasn't such a big issue. It wouldn't have been that easy to do in the short term. The regulations have to be rewritten. You need majorities and so on. So there's nothing a race director can do at short notice. Of course, if you discover intent, then we all know what happens. Then it gets really uncomfortable. But in order to perhaps prevent this a little bit, that someone simply risks too much because he already has set his best lap time, I think in this respect, we need to consider how we want to handle this in the future from a Formula One perspective. I hope we don't have this discussion on Saturday. It's also a bit of a shame for qualifying. It's a real anti-climax. We've also seen it here in Formula Three that there's no real tension at all when something like this happens. Other drivers have really got into trouble as a result. So let's hope that it doesn't come to that in F1 qualifying. Let's hope that Formula One will tackle the problem in the future. And now we're looking forward to what we hope will be an exciting qualifying session, the best of the entire season. If you want to watch it live, you can either watch it on TV, as in Germany, RTL will be broadcasting the qualifiers live this weekend, or if you're on the move or otherwise, you can use our app, free for Android and iOS. There's a live ticker, there are the positions, there are picture galleries with all the beauties here from Monaco, with the cars, everything your heart desires. It's all set for qualifying this weekend.